This is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 through 8. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due. His grave was assigned with wicked men. The book and CD publisher Ascension Press recently was doing a promotional video for a study called no Greater Love, A Biblical Walk Through Christ's Passion. They tried to use a promotional video on Facebook, but Facebook said that the images in the video were too graphic, so they couldn't use them on Facebook. They disallowed it. But the images weren't hardly graphic at all. Facebook thinks that Christ and his passion and death is too shocking for the world. Or maybe better put, too uncomfortable. And that is a lot like the world today. It was a lot like the world back then when Jesus was crucified. Jesus was seized and condemned and was taken away and led to death so that no one could think of him anymore. So that no one could be influenced by him. No one could follow him. And so that he could make no more trouble. And that's a lot like abortion. Many people want it out of sight and out of mind. They don't want you to know what pain and regret it causes women and men. They don't want you to know that it is a direct act of violence that ends human life. They don't want you to know that what we do to the least of the brothers and sisters of Christ, we do to our Lord. But we call attention to the pain that Jesus bore. We call attention to that he was pierced for our sins. And we call attention that he bears our guilt. At the same time as we call attention to the life-ending reality of the unborn, for the unborn and to the destruction perpetrated by Pan Planned Parenthood and doctors and nurses involved. And we call attention that mothers and fathers and medical workers and politicians are finding a better way through repentance as we call attention to these things, as we make sure that we proclaim the truth of what is happening, we realize that there is so much that we can do locally. We can support local pregnancy resource centers with clothes and money and diapers and cribs and volunteer hours with the talents that God gave us. We can come out to an abortion facility and pray we can contact and write to our local politicians and beg them to support human life. And we can draw attention to the reality on the ground of abortion in our conversations with friends and family in a peaceful but insistent manner so that it doesn't get stuck in empty abstract arguments that really have nothing to do with the truth of it all. To summarize, like Jesus who could not be put down and forgotten, we can be the voice of the unborn and the true soul of our country.